So this comes straight from the official Hedera page. They reposted this. Talks about 10 million HC S20 transactions in the last five days. Of course, that's a typo. You know, he might be a foreigner and so on. It's okay. It says that's 10 million HCS transactions, 1,000 USD, 19,308 wallets holding this called HC uh, S20. Might want to look more into it for you guys if you want. And it says, and we have even got through the first week. Um, of course, he has the, the link to, you know, hash scan. Take his word on it, right? We're not going to put a lot of emphasis on, on that. But you like to see things like this part of the what, guys? The Hedera ecosystem. You guys are always saying, hey, Max, share other things for these ecosystems. I, I forgot the whole thing in regards to Stronghold with, you know, Stellar and so on. We'll get into some, um, you know, the whole thing at SHX. If we don't do it by Thursday, we'll do it uh, sometime next week, okay? But the bottom line is I think it's cool to share some of this stuff, right? So getting to the next part, take a look at this. Again, reposted from Hedera. Generation Infinity states, Hedera is setting the bar high. When are they not setting the bar high? By focusing on building a network that's not only profitable, but also self-sustainable, they are ensuring long-term success and resilience. This is how you build for the future. And if anything, we got Hedera's, you know, some people say the number two guy because Lehman Baird is number one. I think kind of like both these guys are equal because, you know, he is, the, what, the co-CEO um, over at Swirls Lab, and he's also co-founder of Hedera. So I would say he's an equal to Lehman Baird. But he does have some comments. He's bullish, obviously, on HBAR, uh, Genfinity, right? This is only a minute, 12 seconds. I want to share this with you guys. It's nice to get some new HBAR news. The Hedera network as a whole is seeing really good growth in terms of network usage, which then tra translates into revenue that pays for the network usage and makes this whole project financially sustainable. And this year, this year there's going to be millions of dollars of revenue. That's that's huge. That's that's big. That's you know that's a major jump over previous years. And things look good from a long-term sustainability perspective. And we're just now coming out. And knock on wood here. I think we're just now coming out of crypto winter. Right. Some have already said that we're we're now in a bull market. Who knows? I hope so, but we've been building for the past two years in the middle of crypto winter. We, I think we're well positioned as an ecosystem to really take advantage of this next cycle. And yeah, I think we're on track to long-term sustainability. So I'm very bullish on that. I like sharing this stuff with you guys. You know, maybe you've seen some of this, maybe you haven't, but it's fresh. You know, and that's cool, especially um, from somebody like that. You know, I mean, I'm always paying attention to some stuff like this. So, you know, it's been a while since you've seen like a new interview from Mance Harmon. So that was cool to share that, obviously. Um, I'm going to share a little bit more because Hedera has been posting a lot of new stuff. So check this out. Here's another one. And this one is also, of course, from Hedera. And it states, digital payments firm. Let me double check my settings. I'm not sure I'm not muted because that would be bad. All right. I was just out of frame. That's all. But yeah, digital payments firm SKUX might not be the right way to pronounce it, but bear with me. They announced today that they have seen or been awarded two new patents. So, you know, again, we're going to get to the quant coverage later on tonight. Big news in regards to patents, but even Hedera. Right, part of the mix, but yes, two new patents for payments processing technology utilizing just that the Hedera network. And on top of that, ZK proofs to enhance the customer experience and mitigate payment fraud. We've always talked about this whole thing of ZK or you know, ZK EVM uh, with Polygon, right? Probably talked you guys' ears off about some of this stuff at this point, but. I like the idea of experiencing this whole thing of mitigating payment fraud. 
Hedera seems to be really at the forefront compared to other, you know, DLT solutions to address some of the key issues. So it says learn more. Um, I'll take you to a little bit about it, but it says fast filtered and frictionless payment done right. Now, let's take you to this article and I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's a lot, but basically speaking, the SKU is the, uh, or SKU pay first multi-patented item level payment adju or adjudication. I can't pronounce that technology not requiring merchants to share sensitive basket level data externally. Cool. Because you guys now talk about Jasmine all the time. So you guys talk about IOTA, right? Internet things. We talk about, you know, protecting privacy. Um, you know, sh the shift from centralized marketplaces to decentralized marketplaces, right? Probably get tired of hearing that too. But that's cool. Utilizing this whole thing with Hedera as well. Date is January 9th. Um, later in digital payments. Or digital, or digital pay, instant payments says SKU X. Uh, please announce this patent, right? And basically, for item level payment processing tech, and it goes more further down about all these things new tools for enhancing customer experience and product level promotions. You may think that some of this sounds kind of boring, it's not, it's significant because you're a Hedera holder. And last I checked, if you can have something. Like Hedera, which does in fact compete with the likes of like you know Hyperledger and uh, even Corda, right? You have to keep in mind that if they have anything exclusive on their platform that can basically legitimately compete with the competition, like I just mentioned, in the form of patents, I think it's a win-win. So going further down, we have some examples of this. Talks about an example of a fast-growing market requiring item level um added i can't pronounce that tonight adjudication at the point of sale in the u.s healthy benefits market based on an, um, analysis of government records it is a uh, estimated to have reached 200 billion in 2023 435 patent is directed towards facilitating real-time integration of promotional offers such as coupons coupon codes gift cards etc um says example is payments are a valuable proactive customer engagement tool for promotional customer services the individualized promotions are serialized in a way that facilitates excuse me real-time tracking of the issuance redemption and corresponding insights that are gained the capability enables a new enhanced customer experience for consumer packaged goods rebates which volume is expected, expected excuse me, to reach $1 billion by 2026, and which estimated 50% will be redeemed to gift cards. So, you know, I'm always talking about Stellar, where I'm like, yeah, you know, Stellar's the one when it comes to, like, being used for, like, goods and services and, you know, just like the regular Joe Schmo retail person and so on. But now you also see, hash, you know, Hedera with the hash graph also right at the forefront, too. So again it's competition and this is where i always feel as though why hold just one why not hold a lot of these i mean you guys have been through this this is why we put so much focus on which ones are part of the whole thing of iso 222 so there's so much more about this i'm not going to read all this but one thing i want to get into is some of the significant things at least in my opinion that i want to bring to your attention so for one um my key thing in summary based off what you saw for hedera tonight um which basically speaking we have a little bit more um but in regards to the whole thing of SKU, is basically speaking digital payments firm SKU, that announcement today basically of uh, being awarded two new patents for payments processing technology uh utilizing of course hedera's network and zk proofs to enhance the customer experience and mitigate payment fraud, the significance of the whole thing. Well, there's a few things that are significant. So for one, the validation and adoption. Again, remember, like I said earlier, your key takeaway for the main topic of tonight's show is adoption. 
mass adoption. So SKUX is a prominent digital payments company and their endorsement through patent acquisition highlights, of course, just that real world applicability and effectiveness of Hedera's tech utilizing their tech and it's crucial sector like finance for instance what they got going on especially with these two particular patents is going to very well attract a whole slew of other businesses in the payment space and spur industry adoption but what Hedera isn't that what we want absolutely now they have been awarded these patents that focus on aspects like item level payment acceptment, acceptance, excuse me, and fraud prevention. Now, don't get me wrong. Some of you guys are into like veracity and so on. And one thing that has always stood out to me, um, well, with veracity is like they also want to prevent fraud or people that. Uh, or businesses that are trying to advertise, especially when it comes to videos, to get real, you know, real engagement, real clicks. You don't want a bot, right? So all those things have significance. But if you like to see these other elements of what kind of makes other blockchains or other crypto projects, I should say, stand out, but being part of the whole mix with Hedera, that's cool. Some of you guys are also into, like, for instance, VET, right? Uh, VeChain. And, um, one of, the, one of the things I that I remember, you know, when I was first covering all coins and I heard first heard about V Chain was, you know, hey, you know, the, this whole concept of being able to take like a barcode and, you know, um, if you're like down in New York or, or whatever, you know, um, you know, I've heard the stories. I haven't been there, but I have a couple of cousins that live there. And they would tell me the stories of like, yeah, the black market's really real there. You're either gonna get two forms of the black market, you're gonna get the ones in which it's stolen items that are real and you know people pay the discounted prices because it's a hot item or you're literally you know thinking you're paying something at a discounted rate and it's fake right you're getting fake polo uh you know hoodie or you're getting fake air jordans or you know whatever the case be nikes whatever right michael kors purse for your girlfriend and wife or whatever so to have this with SKU X already there, already with the patent, and already accessing Hedera's tech, I think this definitely helps Hedera get the leg up. And, you know, we talk about mass adoption, we talk about multiple layers of utility. This is really good. In conclusion, in regards to the SKU part of what we have for Hedera, this is a big technological advancement for mainly two specific reasons so for one these patents do in fact showcase the innovative use cases of course for hedera and there's many different innovative use cases but it's basically beyond uh excuse me beyond its core strength and consensus as we know the hash graph consensus right um and security this is going to integrate features like item level offers and secure digital payments um, that demonstrates specifically Hedera's flexibility and potential for diverse applications across different industries. Again, growing out that ecosystem. This is a premier project that's part of Hedera's ecosystem. How cool is that? What about this other thing about this collaboration? Well, these patents basically will potentially lead to further refinement and optimization of Hedera's technology, but it's also going to allow innovative companies like SKU X, Hedera itself can also receive valuable feedback and refine its solutions to better real suit the real world use cases, expand on those real world use cases. Um, another thing I was gonna mention back to the whole thing, like the examples that we gave earlier about, you know, Corda, um, also, uh, you know, Hyperledger, right? So, it's market competitiveness. You want Hedera to be competitive, obviously. Um, and basically speaking, you know, these patents represent a significant intellectual property win. Yeah, for the win, as the gamers would say, for Hedera, because it potentially creates barriers for entry for the specific competitors and further establishing its position as the leader in the field, as in Hedera. 
So I think that's big. And now let's get into a video. Um, let's go ahead and share this. You guys know about this lady. You should know about this lady. She is from a thing called Gossip by what? Gossip. Gossip about gossip. And she is this lady by the name of Zenobia Godshulk. You think I'd be able to you know, instantly remember her name every time. Sometimes I don't. I have to admit. But anyway, I have fast forwarded to the good parts because we're always talking about Hedera's governing council. Were you aware there's a new president? His name is Charles Atkins. He's a new uh, governing council president, if you will. Um, and if anything, we're going to share some of his background. And then we're going to get into the whole part of why Hedera. And then we'll fast forward it to why this is significant because of Hedera being built for just that, guys. Enterprise. So it's not super long, um, but it's somewhat new. This came out late December. So I thought I'd bring it to you guys. All right. Here we go. But I do think it's valuable to first start with a little bit of your background and how you got here. Yeah, sure. So I was actually, I call it classically trained and schooled in global econ and finance. I started out in investment banking with Morgan Stanley on the private equity side for several years um, in the very early 2000s, and then moved over to U.S. Department of Treasury, um, where I held a security cleared position there. But mainly watched the functions of online banking and online funds transfers globally, um, which was a new, a, a very new thing at the time, although we all know it very well now. Uh, started learning about crypto and NFTs and the whole Web3 ecosystem right around 2013, 2014. Um, ended up at uh, Polygon as the vice president uh, of enterprise applications and financial services in Polygon, very early days um, there, and then on to Aptos Labs, um, where I led global business uh, partnerships there. And you know, I've I've known about Hedera for a long time. Um, I've seen a couple tweets already out there or X messages out there now joking how I've talked about and known about Hedera for three or four years and what took me so long. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I'm I'm officially here now. Awesome. Our community will find anything and everything. Um, so yes, the you know any any Taylor Swift tweets or otherwise, they will be surfaced very soon. <laughs> so you know you've been aware of Hedera, but you've sort of been you know focused on other um, ecosystems. What brought you to this role, or what compelled you to say, hey, maybe I should give this a shot? Yeah, when I kind of saw that the role between executive chairman and president was being split and Brett was going to focus on the chairman role and the president role was open. I said, you know, this is a great opportunity for me to put my hat in the ring and see if the governing council and the search committee is um, going to be willing to accept me as, as president and go through that process. So, you know, it was a long process um, many thought provoking questions and a lot of homework and several months, um, in, in the process, really, um, to get to this point. But Adair has always been really interesting to me, and a lot of it has to do with the governing council model and the way that it's working by utilizing enterprises and taking their feedback and allowing them to be a part of how the ecosystem grows and how the actual technology is being used. You don't see many other chains taking that approach. They typically focus on the consumer, what the consumer has to say, they try to build products based on you know, what they feel an individual consumer may want, but getting that institutional learning from organizations that already have that big of a footprint in the global economy is a really big deal. And I think that's one of the best ways to kind of drive the information about this technology out in, you know, to, to a broader scope of people. And so, you know, taking a little bit of a step back, um, we did announce, you know, that we are splitting the role. So can you help um, folks who are not, you know, necessarily involved in governance or involved in this level at their organization understand the difference between chair and president? Yeah, the chair is, uh, you know, the, the presidential, the president role and specifically what I'll be mainly focusing on is the operations of the, the staff at Hedera how Hedera is actually running some influence on, on the foundation, Hashgraph Association, um, working very closely with Swords Labs and just really understanding kind of the broader ecosystem and community 
and helping to drive the operational efforts on that side and hopefully influence and bring in more council members in 2024, um, which you know will be really exciting. Um, on the chairman role, that's more managing some of the governance things, some of the governance decisions. Uh, managing many of the the meetings, many of the governing council members, the voting processes, um, more things of that nature as far as the governance side is is concerned. And I'll be mainly more on the operation side. You'll probably see me a lot more publicly speaking at events, being at events. Um, that's more of a role that I'll most likely be playing. And as you go out and engage, you know, with the public, um, are there any things that you want them to know um, in terms of, you know, either folks who who have known you in you know previous lives or um, who are just getting to know you? Yeah, I think if it's if it's somebody that's not familiar with Hedera or kind of DLT technology, blockchain technology in general, I hope that they really do take a look at the consensus mechanisms and the actual technology that drives Hedera to be what it is. Um, it's very unique, it's very scalable and very fast. And it's one of those, they call it, you know, the blockchain trilemma of how do you stay decentralized, fast and secure. And Hedera is one of the chains out there. Well, I will say it's, it's DLT. It's not necessarily a sequential chain um, that really solves a lot of those problems. And I think that's why many of the larger organizations have been drawn to it is because it does have that safety and security aspect as well as being able um, to have the throughput and speed that an organization of those size would need. But that doesn't mean that if you're a builder or developer out there building a game, you could only imagine that Hedera is a great place to come and test building your game. If you get a lot of users, that's something that's really helpful. If you're building an NFT project and you're going to have many interactions and you want your community to thrive in an environment that's safe um, and one where the performance is going to excel, Hedera is a great place as well. So it's one of those rare places where the individual consumer can really find a place and large organizations can really meet all of the standards that they have as well. Yeah. And I think, you know, we talk about that too, when we say it is built for enterprise or for that enterprise scale, that doesn't mean it's just for enterprise. You know, I have yet to meet a founder and entrepreneur who's like, yep, I just want to have this tiny project that never grows. Like my wildest dream is to be an enterprise someday. So why wouldn't you start by building on kind of that enterprise, you know, backbone and that, um, that infrastructure that can help you scale up to where you want to be when you're su successful beyond your wildest dreams. Yeah, that's right. And so the community is going to see you, you know, out and about at a lot of places. Um, I think probably the first place, um, since you're going to be up and running very quickly, is in Davos in um, January. I think you have been there before, right? It's been several years, but yes, I have. I was back there in a government capacity with Treasury. Yeah. And so can you, you know, give us a little bit of color um, we've taken some of this community on that journey, but, you know, the kinds of meetings and the kinds of interactions that you hope to have there now as part of Hedera. Yeah, I think a lot of the meetings that, that I'll hope to have is obviously with large organizations, but also people that can, you know, move policy along that are thinking about Web3 and blockchain and DLT technology in a way that can bring some clarity to regulation. Um, that's something that's always really exciting to hear kind of what you know, what's working out there and what may be finding challenges um, in certain regions. There's obviously a global presence there. So it's really good to have, you know, boots on the ground, as it were, and hear it from people who are actually dealing with this on a day to day basis. Um, the other thing is there's a lot of people there that have, you know, environmental and sustainability goals that I think Adara can really impact in a positive way. So those are a lot of the conversations I'd like to have. And then with our governing council now, being so strong, there's a lot of examples that I'll be able to bring to the table to say, hey, look, this is already working. This isn't this isn't just a vision that we have. These are actual case studies that are working. And I, I think that's going to be a really positive thing. Yeah. And, you know, touching on the governing council, you, um, you know, I won't say they put you through the ringer, but it was certainly a, a, a good and detailed interview process. So any insights from that or um, things that you want to share in terms of your conversations with them throughout that process. Yeah, I, I'm just, I feel really optimistic about the level of knowledge that the governing council has. Typically, 
there's this misconception that these large organizations don't really understand you know webry they don't understand decentralization they don't understand the idea of how to build a community around a technology and through that process i can say i've learned that it's completely the opposite of that these are highly educated people and not only building communities and brands um they understand decentralized technology and governance they understand how important it is to have transparency and sustainability just really incredible questions all along the way and actually just many things that were very thought provoking that hopefully I can focus on moving forward too. Yeah, deeper conversations then can happen on crypto Twitter, for instance. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> All right, Charles, we know you have a very busy day. Anything else you would like to share with us or with the community before we let you go? I think I'll just give a big thank you to the, the governing council members who are entrusting me with this position and a really big thanks to the entire Hedera community. Um, the outreach on social media and people messaging me and congratulating me has been pretty overwhelming for today, but um, I'll be sure to reach out to as many people as I possibly can. Um, but I really appreciate all the, the love from the community. It's been huge. Awesome. We love to hear that. Thank you so much, Charles. The significance of how this all plays into Hedera, right? So addressing enterprise needs, just kind of like what you saw also in the previous video. Hedera's features directly address the concerns of security, scalability, real-world integration, right? That often hold back enterprises, of course, from blockchain adoption. Again, I can't pound at home enough. Key takeaway, of, you know, tonight is adoption. This positions them as a strong contender for real-world use cases. Who? Obviously, Hedera. They got the competitive edge um, compared to other often more slower uh less stable blockchains we get it hedera is not a blockchain it's you know the hash graph consensus protocol and so on but it's a dlt and hedera's performance and security often um, offer a significant advantage in attracting of course enterprise clients it's one of the key things that stands out for hedera time and time again um, it's going to drive faster growth and of course keep expanding out that ecosystem now, one thing I want to point out in regards to competition in the enterprise blockchain space, well, we know it's fierce, right? It's a fierce battle for a lot of these. Um, they might not officially come out and say, hey, we're in competition with you know, XYZ project and so on, but they definitely are. While Hedera has unique strengths, just like anything, it faces challenges from established players, like I mentioned, Hyperledger Fabric, merging solutions like Corda. But you got to keep in mind these things that they got going on with this new player, SKUX, for these two specific pat uh, specific patents, I think is an absolute game changer. And I was glad, of course, to share this whole thing um, that we shared with you earlier in regards to this new member of the Hedera Council, right? Pretty cool stuff to see his background, how Hedera comes into the whole mix as far as enterprise use case and so on. Thank <laughs> you.